Welcome to this webinar. Due to the sensitive nature and content within these sessions, we would advise you undertake the training in a private space where you are unlikely to be interrupted. All contact numbers for the agencies mentioned within this webinar will be provided as a PDF file to download. We will use the word survivor and victim interchangeably to portray those on the receiving end of domestic abuse. This webinar is brought to you in partnership with the DIN Project slash Safer Wales, Mid and West Wales Vauda SV Partnership and Petals Training. As a member of Safer Wales team, I am going to share our experiences and realities of working with men who experience domestic abuse in Wales. When we consider domestic abuse, often the first image that comes to mind is a man abusing a woman. This is the public story we see in the news, media and entertainment. These statistics are backed up by data revealing that the majority of victims are women. However, men also experience domestic abuse. Many men's experiences will be similar to women's. However, in many cases, this provides different challenges. Whilst it is agreed that domestic abuse can happen to anyone, it is important to highlight and recognise that male abuse is often underrepresented in the data. We will briefly look at some male victims' statistics and witness how this area of abuse is underrepresented in terms of recorded evidence. Collecting data can be problematic and information is not always available, or more importantly, does not provide the context of the abuse. We also know that anyone who experiences domestic abuse may not report it, for various reasons. We will touch upon specific issues for men later in the presentation. As a provider, we have seen the figures and awareness of male abuse increase, especially in Wales, e.g. with the Welsh Government Live Fear Free campaigns. Perhaps surprisingly, the ONS data would suggest that more men are likely to report that the perpetrator was female rather than male. From this ONS statistic, we can see that victims of partner abuse in the last year were asked to state the sex of the person or people who abused them. Male victims were more likely to report that the perpetrators were female than male, 61% compared with 1%. However, in our experience, our data does not support these statistics. Instead, our data indicates that more men experience violence from their male partners. It is clear from this conflicting data that we need more research into this area. Statistics are important as they help us to understand the magnitude and nature of the problem of domestic abuse in Wales. But more than that, our experience and case studies provide an important context. They tell us what the statistics can't about the day-to-day -day reality of a man living with domestic abuse. We are now going to look at the potential signs and symptoms of men who are experiencing domestic abuse. We see many signs and symptoms which may help us identify a man who experiences domestic abuse. The following is not an exhaustive list, but reveals some of the signs we may see. These are not in any order of importance, but merely offer a snapshot. For example, many men will often become depressed and lose motivation. We have many men we remain in contact with, who become very isolated, depressed and lose motivation in life. For example, this will include going out, participating in work and social activities, etc. Encountering a man who is depressed does not, of course, mean he is a victim of domestic abuse, but it can be a small indication. In our experience, many will not recognise that they are experiencing abuse. Many will experience issues with housing, finance and performance at work. We may also identify changes in behaviour, which may include becoming less confident, increased drinking and substance misuse. Often the signs are subtle. For example, we hear of men needing to seek permission for every decision they make. Threatened with violence. The gendered nature of domestic violence means that women and men have different safety and support needs. 
This slide represents domestic abuse in a same-sex relationship. From our experience, we are more likely to hear about physical violence or threat of violence in this relationship. If you can imagine from this image the psychological impact of the threats of violence, for example, threats to hit the victim, pointing fingers aggressively, holding a weapon, displaying violent tendencies, all of these can have far-reaching effects. For example, we worked with a man whose abuser kept a hammer by the front door. This was a clear threat that if he ever attempted to leave, the hammer was there to remind him of the consequence. It is extremely important that we do not just concentrate solely on cuts and bruises as the only visible signs and symptoms, but also recognise that psychological and coercive control can often have a much more damaging effect on men. Many will experience financial abuse in an abusive relationship. In a healthy relationship, it is acceptable for one partner to take charge of the finances and budgets as part of their role in the family. However, many men in abusive relationships report experiencing financial abuse, and this can be viewed as a form of coercive control. This may include retaining money, issuing an allowance, demanding receipts, and checking phone bills. Men also tell us that to improve life for their abuser, they will work longer hours and undertake extra work, in the hope that the abuser will change their behaviour. Some victims have had credit cards taken out in their names, although never seeing the cards or making any decision on the usage and the amount spent. They can become responsible for large debts or even lose entitlement to some benefits. Quite often, this will only be revealed once the man has left the abusive relationship. Isolation from friends and family In this case, the perpetrator will often isolate the victim from friends and family. This enables the perpetrator to use their power to control the situation. This will often be in subtle ways, such as making up excuses not to visit family, stopping friends and family coming to the house, making it difficult to go to any work functions and social gatherings. We must also be aware of the stereotyping and language we often hear in these situations, which include, he's under the thumb, or he has now settled down. Using children as part of the abuse. Many perpetrators will use children against the victim. This will include statements such as, if you leave, you will never see the children again, or, if you leave, I will tell everybody you are a bad person, stroke father. This is a difficult dilemma for a male trying to leave the relationship. Often overlooked is the fact that many men still love their partner and will want to stay and protect the children. Within the Safer Wales slash DIN project, we offer support and legal advice to men who have access issues with their children post-separation. Many men will lose their independence. This is best explained when men are unable to make decisions. This may include socialising with family members or friends, how money is spent, and decisions regarding their children. They can no longer perform everyday tasks, as the perpetrator takes control. An example could be how decisions are made on how to spend a weekend as a family, where the victim has no say in how this is going to happen. Whilst this may happen in a normal household in the absence of abuse, it is still relevant to a person who has no autonomy to make simple decisions. For example, one male we encountered had many issues in his relationship, which included excessive drinking and financial difficulties. Against his will, his abusive partner coerced him into spending his benefits on alcohol and undermined his ability to make decisions for himself. Our work indicates that the majority of men over the age of 60 may, for various reasons, be more likely to suffer in silence. The oldest male we worked with was over 90 years old. They may have been in a relationship for a long time and do not want to leave. This could also include the impact on children, grandchildren and the fear of being alone. In our experience, many cultural issues and societal expectations will come into play, for example, Men do not ask for help slash support, and quite often that makes it much more difficult to leave. We have worked with men who will flee their abuser, but find themselves in an alien environment they never anticipated.
We worked with an older male who had to flee his abusive partner and access emergency accommodation, which he found very difficult and emotional. How do we encourage men to disclose? This is the important reason for us being here today. We want to encourage men to disclose domestic abuse. There are many ways we can do this, and we hope presentations such as this will help highlight the issues around abuse. It is important we create networks, whether they be social, work, colleagues, agencies, family, to encourage men to disclose abuse. Many men will often tell us, I wish I'd known about the project. I wish I had known that there was help out there. And more importantly, I wish somebody had asked me. For many men, there were several missed opportunities to ask the relevant question. This can be achieved in several ways with questions such as, Is everything okay at home? Are you safe in your relationship? In Wales, you may also be aware of the 2015 Ask and Act policy and how we can learn from this approach of not only asking, but acting. We can also help create space for victims which includes seeing or speaking with them alone. This is all the more important if the perpetrator is with them. The workplace can be a suitable environment to support male victims. You might notice a change in behaviour in a colleague. You could mention your concerns to a supervisor and check your workplace domestic abuse policies and or contact any of the agencies listed in the presentation. We have posters and leaflets available which can be displayed in your workplaces and shared on social media and websites. We also display our leaflets in male toilets. We are keen to spread the word that advice and support is available. We find that men will eventually find their way to support and many have found our service through internet searches. We would encourage providers, especially police, housing, health and well-being services to ask the question as many men are more likely to present to you before they access domestic abuse services. We can help you with this. There are many barriers to accessing support for men. Firstly, we need men to understand and accept that they are experiencing domestic abuse. This is probably the biggest obstacle for men in general. This can often be masked by depression and the feeling that something's not right in my life. Many men will often try to help the perpetrator and excuse their behaviour, with statements such as, they haven't always been like this, or they had a tough childhood. All these excuses impact on men accessing support. When a man realises that he is being abused and needs help, there is help available, including his GP, well-being services or accessing statutory support. For many men, they will worry about what other agencies think of him. This will include fear of being believed, of being ridiculed, of challenges to their masculinity, e.g. man up. Men in same-sex relationships may fear being outed or fear homophobic attack. We must stress that quite often fears do not materialise. We are going to share where men can access support. We are the Safer Wales DIN project, which is the only domestic abuse service in Wales dedicated to men. We work alongside other services across Wales. The project started 18 years ago and our expertise is based on what we have learned and now shared with you today. We believe that every man has a right to be safe. For many men who contact us, it is the first time they have disclosed domestic abuse. It is a big step and provides relief for men. We help men navigate and take steps on a journey to safety. We will discuss their support needs and provide an opportunity for them to listen and offload in a confidential space. We work with many agencies and support services across Wales, which means, in simplest form, men do not have to tell the same story repeatedly. We can be the link and help them provide the tools for their support needs. We offer a three-tier service, Advocacy for Men and One-to-One -one Support DIN Wales Helpline, which is available for victims, professionals, concerned family and friends and people who just want some information.
We deliver training and awareness across Wales and awareness such as this and occasionally engage with media articles to raise awareness of men's needs. We are funded by the Welsh Government and regularly provide our expertise for service user engagement and policies. This is one of our survivor stories. Names and identity have been anonymised. This man engaged with the project and is still in contact with us several years after the abuse. We are going to call this man David. Since the early 1990s, David knew something was wrong when the first incident occurred. When he left social gathering with his wife, she was angry with him and asked him to get out of the car. David did this and she attempted to run him over. David forgave her and made excuses for her behaviour. At this point, David had no idea he was experiencing domestic abuse. He had already normalised the behaviour. David was a serving police officer and eventually attempted to leave the relationship many times. He eventually left until his daughter convinced him to return home. When he did return home, his brother and sister witnessed the physical abuse and had to intervene. David was controlled by his wife. He was not allowed a mobile phone, and his independency and agency was taken away from him. This included not being allowed his own money, having to provide receipts to prove how much he had spent, and she would always ask for the change. David was also isolated from his friends and family. As a social person, David would often be asked to attend social events, but would not be allowed to go out. David would make up excuses until the invitations eventually stopped. It all came to a head when his wife had again physically attacked him. He took some money from the cupboard, and when his wife went inside he left the property, with just the clothes he was wearing. When he left, his wife reported him as a missing person, and the police eventually found him to check that he was safe. The police did not disclose his whereabouts at this stage. David still did not fully recognise that he was a victim of domestic abuse. David spoke with a former colleague and told him what had happened, and immediately his colleague recognised this was domestic abuse, and instantly searched for support services in Wales. They discovered the DIN project, and David called my colleague and visited our office to receive support from us. At this time, David was in temporary accommodation and felt very insecure. He was also worried about being an ex-police officer, as that could cause tension with the other tenants. David did eventually stay with friends and family and arranged to meet up with his children, who to this day have been his support network. David is still in touch with the project and is now interested in volunteering for the project. David would like other men to speak out and is hoping his experience can help others to follow suit and access support. David is now in a much better place, with people commenting on how much younger and healthier he looks. We also work with the Live Fear Free helpline, providing training for the team to support male victims. We jointly work together on cases. We are not a 24-hour helpline, but Live Fear Free provide this facility, in an emergency of 999 applies. In the next slides are a number of agencies we work jointly with on subjects including housing and safety planning. We would recommend you keep these details. See attached PDF file. Several other agencies that we work with. Here you can see the sector working together for the same common goal, to make people safe. We have several services in the area to provide interventions for those who are displaying abusive behaviour. At times, being a men's project means we do signpost men to these services if they are concerned about their behaviour. Local contact details for agencies that work to support the person displaying the behaviours. There is also a national helpline we use that is managed by Respect for England and Wales. Contact details for all agencies within this presentation can be found within the PDF document attached. 
please feel free to contact any of the agencies for support and advice on how to help others. We are continually striving to improve awareness of these topics. We thank you for your time today.